Moti uh, Bari is a professor of Jewish studies at the University of North Carolina in Pembroke and the author of five books on different Jewish Orthodox responses to Zionism. Moti earned his PhD at the Institute of Contemporary Jewry, currently part of the Department of Modern Jewish History at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And before coming to North Carolina, he also served as a fellow at the University <coughs> of Florida at the Schusterman Center of Jewish Studies in Brandeis. His forthcoming book is Ruth Blau, A Life of Paradox and Purpose. The floor is yours, Moti. No, no, call the center. All right. So I guess the floor is mine now, yes? Yes. All right. Thank you very much, the organizers, for allowing me to uh, participate in the conference from far away from the other side of the ocean. And um, uh, let me uh, share my uh, PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so the subject of my uh, presentation today is uh, the assassination of a Jacob Israel de Han. The man you see in the picture uh, wearing a, a Bedouin attire, and I will discuss this uh, strange clothes uh, choice that uh, de Han was uh, uh, making, you typically don't expect an ultra-orthodox leader to be dressed up as uh, an Arab, especially, unless it's Purim, maybe, unless it's Purim, but uh, yeah, so we'll explain why, why we see this strange picture. And uh, the first thing that I would like to do is to tell a few words about uh, the old Yeshua. So the old Yeshuv in Jerusalem was a long-standing community of observant Sephardi and Ashkenazi Jews who adhered to the traditional perception of settlement in the land of Israel as a religious and spiritual value of importance to the entire Jewish people. So uh, these uh, families, men, uh, who settled in uh, Jerusalem and other places like Safed um, and Tiberias, uh, basically were Torah, Torah scholars, and uh, they were studying uh, the Torah uh, all the time, and the entire Jewish world was supporting them through donations, and it was viewed as they uh, like working for the entire Jewish world, they uh, studying and praying in Jerusalem for the sake of all the rest of the Jews, and so the entire Jewish world was to support them for, this, uh, for their activities. And um, with the rise of the Zionist movement, the, the new issue and the old issue started to clash with one another. And um, I would uh, and I would just put some background to understand the reasons for these clashes. So just one, uh, just putting it that without Israel, that the political movement that represented the, the Orthodox world. Uh, was founded in uh, 1219, um, which wanted to distinguish itself from the Mizrahi movement that was part of the uh, Zionist uh, organization. Agudat Israel was not part of the Zionist organization and was founded to distinguish itself from the Zionist uh, Orthodox branch. So the Ottoman Milan system which granted administrative autonomy to recognize religious communities remained intact with the British mandate. During the Ottoman period, the old Yeshuv had exercised considerable governmental power over its communities through the institution of the Chaham Bashi, which is the Sephardi chief rabbi. And the man you see in the picture is the Chacham Bashi of uh, Syria from that period of time. Following the British conquest of Palestine in 1918, uh, 
Zionist activists in Jerusalem established a single committee to represent all the Jews in the city. Um, the, the separatist Haredi community refused to join the committee and found an alternative body known as the Ashkenazi City Committee. The Zionists demanded that women will be permitted to participate in the elections against the will of the old Yeshu. So I would like to uh, expand a little bit and to say that um, according to the Ottoman law, all Jews had to be lumped into one group. And this group was under the leadership of the old Yeshu. So the British mandate basically kept the same system, but put the Zionists on top of, the, of that group, instead of the old issue, which created the, the tensions and frictions between the, two, between the two sides. The old issue refused to be under the leadership of the Zionists. Okay, we are introduced now to Dr. Jacob Israel Dehan. He was born into a traditional Jewish family in Smilde in the Netherlands. At an early age, Dehan left the religious lifestyle and joined various communist groups. <coughs> he was considered one of the greatest Dutch poets of his time. He was also a novelist. He gained a PhD in law and went to teach law at Amsterdam University. His books and poems openly raised the themes reflecting his homosexual orientation. During the First World War, he responded to anti-Semitism by returning to Orthodox Judaism and joining the Mizrahi Religious Zionist Party. In 1919, he immigrated to Palestine. He initially hoped to find his place in, in the Zionist leadership but his services were declined, partly because he was a homosexual. In March 1920, he decided to change his allegiance and became a member of the Ashkenazi City Committee. He then began to provide services as a council and foreign minister to the old Yeshu. So maybe here we need to say that the old Yeshu didn't have the abilities to, didn't have the, the men that can represent them in front of the British authority. They had Torah scholars, but they didn't have a, like a sophisticated uh, people who are familiar with the world of the outside the Roman class. So when the Han decided to join their uh, group, they found a, a great opportunity with his skills that he can represent them and represent the uh, issues in front of the British uh, rulers. So we can divide the Han's uh, battles or wars into two groups. One would be the legal battles, and the other would be the political battles. And I would start with the legal battles. And remember, the Han was uh, a law professor. So uh, the Han advocated the foundation of two autonomous communities, a national community and a Haredi community. And here this is where they come, the term comes, Eda Leumit and Eda Haredit. The British rulers demanded that a single chief rabbinate be established for the Jews in Palestine. That will, that will take the role of the Chacham Bashi, but the British uh, also understood that, that this uh, rabbinate cannot have only one Sephardi rabbi, they need to have two rabbis, one Sephardi, one Ashkenazi. The man you see in the picture, this is Rabbi Cook, the first Ashkenazi rabbi. The Han played a leading role in excluding the old Yeshu from the rabbinate's authority. The Han's greatest achievement was preventing the adoption of the con community's constitution in its original format. The subsequent compromise clarified that members of Knesset Israel 
the parliamentary institution of the Jewish residents of Palestine was voluntary, and the authorities and the authority of the chief rabbinate extend only to those Jews subjects of the mandate who choose to affiliate with the body. Okay, so what it really what it means is that the Han was able to uh, to break, you know, this uh, this uh, institution that lumps all Jews into one group and uh, basically uh, created this legal situation where ultra orthodox Jews can choose to choose can choose to, to join the Zionist institution and they don't have to. And the chief rabbinet is not in charge of the old Yeshuv. And this was very important for the old Yeshuv. It's not just symbolically <coughs> who's going to be the leader, it's going to be cook or someone else, but the old Yeshuv had a lot of institutions like the Yeshivot and Kolelim and the synagogues. And what it meant, what they were feel, what they feel was that the, the chief rabbinate will, will confiscate all of these institutions and turn them under the authority of the chief rabbinate. And this was the major fear. The Han was able to exclude all these properties from the hands of the old Yeshua, from, from the hands of the new Yeshua, and from the hands of the chief rabbinate. So this was his major achievement. And the, there was also the Arab option. The Han secured a meeting with the um, Al with Alfred Charles Ham Hamsworth, who was known as Lord Northcliffe, a British first tycoon that visited Palestine in 1922. Among the general Jewish uh, public, the meeting was perceived as an attempt to throw the, bunch, the Balfour Declaration. After the visit, Northcliffe became a radical anti zionist in uh, 1923 and uh, 1924, he met several times with members of the Hashemite dynasty. Hussein bin Ali, the ruler of Hijaz, his son, Emir Abdallah, the ruler of Transjordan, and King Faisal of Iraq. The Han offered them to sign a peace treaty with Agudat Israel that would allow Jews to live in peace under our rule, although without any special national rights. They had organized the summit of leading rabbis with King Hussein of Hijaz on February 24, 1924, in Shuna, Jordan. So basically, the Han was trying to create an aid to cancel the Balfour Declaration and to sign a different uh, Peace treaty with the Hashemite dynasty that received the major to received to rule major parts of the Arab world at that time because of their loyalty to the British uh, British Empire and basically uh, to uh, to uh, make the Arabs promise that they will not harm Jews and they will make them equal citizens in their in their countries and once the British uh, authorities will leave the Palestine, and uh, the expectation was that the, the king uh, of Transjordan would take control over Palestine and uh, make Jews uh, equal citizens in his, uh, in his dominion. So this was the Hans plan. The national Jewish circles were opposed by the delegation's visit to Transjordan. The National Committee issued a declaration claiming that the delegation's objective has been to divide the Jewish voice and to suggest that all Jews of the world did not share a common aspiration to build a national home in the land of Israel. This is a treacherous step that cannot, met, cannot be met with silence, the declaration added. So the Han planned to visit London in order to continue his diplomatic efforts to secure autonomy for the Haredi community by meeting with the British Minister of Justice. 
The news about it was written in the papers that he was planning to travel to London. And Abraham Tahomi, which is the man you see in the picture, shot the hand as he was leaving the synagogue after evening prayer, and he killed him. To this day, it remains unclear who gave the orders to send Tahomi to, on his mission. Haredi writers attribute the decision to the senior echelons of the Zionist movement, Ben Gurion and Weizmann. The commander of the Haganah in Jerusalem was Yitzhak Ben Tzvi, who was later to become Israel's president. So this is the minimum. It's the minimum Yitzhak Ben Tzvi, the maximum is Ben Gurion. <laughs> so these are the speculations who gave the order. After his assassination, Rabbi Moshe Bloy assumed the leadership of the old Yeshuv and Agudat Israel, adopting a more moderate policy that emphasized a common faith of the Haredim and the nationalist Jew. The Arab option was abandoned in favor of a pragmatic domestic Jewish approach. The Arab riots of 1929, whose victims were mainly members of the old Yeshuv, marked a turning point. The tragic event in which 133 Jews were murdered underscored the common fate of the Jews in the conflict with the violent Arab nationalism. The rise of Hitler in Germany in 1932 made Palestine a place of refuge for all Jews. Basically, the Haredim realized that um, they need the protection of the Agana from Arab nationalists. So they cannot strike deals with the Arabs. They are not going to help them. And when Hitler came to power in Germany, and Palestine became the only place in which Jews could uh, escape, they needed the certificates. They needed visa. So this whole, this whole uh, you know, plan was basically abandoned. So, in conclusion, the Hans' achievements were on the legal ground. He was able to create a legal separation between the Haredi and the secular, which exists until today. His, his, Arab, option, his Arab option was a failure, and even the Haredi leadership that came after him realized it was unrealistic and counterproductive. The Han was the first, and political assassinations remain until today a widespread and effective tool by Israeli secret services. The Han became an icon for the radical ultra-Orthodox community, like Satma, those who are anti-Zionist, and the LGBT community in Holland. I'm done. Thank you.